Hello, welcome to Shad Life. Well, as you know, if you've been following my channel recently, I'm going down to Bentonville. I'll be going down there next weekend uh, for about three or four days. Um, one thing I did do is I switched my uh, DT Swiss wheels over to the Spectral 125. So this is the bike that's going down there. Um, and I want to have the stock wheels uh, as backup. So what I did is um, I ordered some tires uh, for the other wheels so I don't have to deal with sealant and all that. Um, but while I was doing it, I decided to order the upgrade kit for the DT Swiss uh, hubs that are on there. Um, they're 350 hubs. Um, and so I decided to take the hub apart and look at it. And I thought, well, I might as well show you since I just did a video on the internals of the i9 hub. So I'll show you how this one is different. It's pretty wild. Um, so yeah, let's go over there to the bench and uh, get into it. Oh, and before that, if you're wondering why I have my canyon set up like this, uh, I did a video on how I did this makeshift manual machine. I've been practicing manuals on this bike. The front wheel of this bike is harder to get up. <laughs> so I want to practice and just be kind of ready for when I get to Bentonville, I'll be really familiar with how much pull it requires and all of that. So, yep, definitely want to be prepared and feel really comfortable on this bike and knowing where the manual spot is and being comfortable with it is like a key to being really fluid and consistent and have a lot of fun on a bike. Okay, so here is the DT Swiss 350 uh, cassette body. Um, this is the Shimano Microspline and you can hear the clicks. And one of the reasons I wanna upgrade to the higher uh, engagement is because there's quite a bit of movement before you get an engagement right and I want that to be closer so um, to take this apart you basically I'm gonna do this with my left hands you can see you basically just have to pull this out it should come out fairly easily of course you know the problem is is it's super greasy my hands are all greasy so it's hard to get a hold of it so there we go we just basically pull this out right and then put that aside i always put grease side up uh, my bench is <laughs> quite messy um and then now we have uh the bearing in there you can see it right and the free hub body now what's super cool is this free hub body just comes right off and I'm trying to, okay, there is spring in there, but this came up with the free hub body. So let's get this out of there. Okay, the spring is in there. I just want to make sure it doesn't go spring. And here is where the spring is. It rests right inside there. So I will go through each part here in a second. So here is the free hub body. So if we were wanting to change this out, this is how easy it is to change out right no tools required believe it or not the only tool required would be to take your cassette off and actually well if you want to change a free hub body you'd have to take your cassette off but to get in here and work on this you could leave your cassette on there and actually by leaving your cassette on there you'd have more leverage to pull this off um and make it a little easier rather than me trying to grab it with my greasy hands right um so there you go this is a micro spline you could change this out to an hg driver which is a standard old school one or you could go to a sram uh, xd driver um, that allow you to upgrade from let's just say you had nx to gx i did a video on that on a different hub uh, the ibis hub a long time ago so there's that then the spring and i'll explain the role of the spring here uh, in a few minutes but let's just set that aside. Um, the important piece here is these two pieces. Plates, you might wanna call them, and they have splines on them. So we have internal splines on the hub, and 
external splines here and so these get locked into the hub right but the engagement happens right here so if you look you can see me turn this and it'll go one direction let's get a little closer make sure that's in focus it'll go one direction but it won't go the other direction it'll it'll lock going this direction it'll click going this direction that is the key to these and if you look you can see that these are ramped if you look really close and so one side is ramped the other side is vertical to engage so super cool um, very different system uh, less complicated than say a system that has those little poles if you looked at my last video um, I'll just do a quick little screenshot here of the poles right so those are very different they move in and out and they engage on grooves on the inside of the hub and I showed that with the industry 9 hub that I just uh, switched out drivers for this is a very different system I like different systems and ingenuity in this process so um, basically these the bottom one locks into the hub right and there's a spring on that side too there is a spring in there just fyi um, so the role of the springs now is to allow for this movement when i'm turning this so the spring will allow it to move so it can click and engage into the next group if the springs weren't there you wouldn't be able to do that if you had something putting direct pressure on here so you need those springs to allow for that a little bit of movement right so then putting this back together we we get that locked into the hub we just lay this on top they can go either way that's another thing you can't really make a mistake um, springs do need to go a certain way so we're going to grab the free hub body the spring has to go down you know the narrow the skinnier side down the wider side up right and you just throw that on there you know it doesn't matter if it's a little sloppy here because once it's inside here it's going to be set in place right um and then you have these splines which are going to grab this top one so the bottom one's going to be part of the hub this is going to be part of the free hub body and then we go ahead and put that on now this part can get a little tricky you just have to keep well <laughs> guess not this time sometimes it takes a little spinning and movement to get everything to slide into place but this just popped right in and now you can hear it working super cool and then you want to put the cap back on so i ordered new plates that's all that needs to be replace in order to upgrade this so let's get my greasy hands <laughs> oh look at that comes right off when i grab a rag um so i ordered new plates so i basically ordered new ones of these and all they have is more of these little uh Again, you know, people always help me with the naming of things. I don't know what these engagement pieces are, ramps, you know, but it just will have more of those, so they, there'll be more engagement. Um, not as much as Industry 9, but um, I'll be upgrading from 30-something. I'll put on the screen the exact numbers because I don't remember off the top of my head, but the ones I ordered are 50-something, and these are 30-something engagements. And so that'll significantly increase the number of engagements and will have less slop um, nice to have for more technical riding and stuff like that but not necessary really for most people but if you like to get into technical situations and you're riding slow and you do the ratchet thing where you're backpedaling and pushing forward it's nice to have a higher engagement hump also what I've noticed um, is when I'm pedaling faster through some stuff and then I coast for a moment and I start pedaling again it's like instant power engagement to 
to the hub so that you definitely feel a difference between a high engagement hub and a lower engagement hub. So that's why I'm going to upgrade these um, before I go to Bentonville. So there you have it. Um, I've got the new parts on the way. I'll get these wheels set up. And so when I'm down in Bentonville, in order to switch to these wheels, all I have to do is switch over the rotors, which are super easy because they're the center lock style and the cassette and throw these on my bike and I'm ready to go. Um, tires are the messy part. That's why I figured, well, I should get some other tires on here. And being that most of my bikes are 27.5, I don't have a lot of 29 tires. So um, I ordered some uh, 27.5 uh, Schwalbe tires actually for this, for these wheels. So they should be a lot of fun down there. Um, but yeah, I'm very curious to know how these bird spoke wheels are going to ride down in Bentonville. And I'll have these in case, or, you know, whether it's, I, I, I trust the bird spoke wheels. It's just, I don't know if I'm going to like how they feel. <laughs> so that's why I want to have these in case. If I don't really like how they feel on this type of bike, <laughs> then I can throw these on there and ride it normally and as we saw from my previous video the penalty weight wise isn't that big between these and the bird spoke wheels which i was kind of shocked of but yeah these wheels are really nice the stock wheels that came on <laughs> my spectra 125 are amazing so pretty impressive there I appreciate your support from my channel. If you really like this kind of content, please hit the subscribe button down there. Um, I promise you I'll get some more riding content, more how-to content, all that stuff very soon. Um, what's happening right now is we are in full-blown winter. There's actually a snowstorm going on right now here in Minnesota. So I'll get some more riding content. Obviously, I'll have some from Bentonville here in a few days and after that hopefully here in minnesota we start to get into real spring and uh i'll have more content then so yeah hit that subscribe button lots more to come peace <laughs>